Well, for the first time, there is real new hope for the homeless in Broward as the county clears the tent city in downtown Fort Lauderdale and embraces the housing first movement. Broward Mayor Beam Fur explains the philosophy. The national best practice of housing first, the model we've adopted is a well-planned, humane and dignified approach that prioritizes getting unsheltered homeless individuals and families quickly into homes of their own with medical, mental health, substance abuse and job training services, <coughs> financial assistance and other supportive services as needed to assure sustainable housing. Our goal is to see, is to see that every resident of the current downtown Fort Lauderdale encampment is home for the holidays. Yeah. Well, 80 people living there, including at least one child, have all been moved to temporary housing. And in the week or so that has passed, roughly half of those folks are now in permanent dwellings with the rest on their way to permanent housing. The United Way's Lynn Wines is senior director of the Broward Business Council on Homelessness. That's part of Broward's new homelessness collaborative. Lynn, thank you so much for being with us. Oh, Pam, thank you for inviting me. So as we were speaking earlier, this is fresh. This is just happening now after all of these efforts have been put in place to finally move these folks who were at this encampment for so long into housing. So talk about this initiative and what's being done here. So this is this is happening as we speak and will happen for a very long time. Um, back in April, Mike Jackson, the CEO of Auto Nation, issued uh, a challenge to the community and he said, you know what, we are better than this. So he issued a call to action and he backed it up with a $300,000 challenge grant. He called on the business community to come together with the county, with the city of Fort Lauderdale, with the service providers and say, we need to do a better job and we need to help these people that are living right in our downtown corridor. And so the business community came together along with, as I said, the county, the city and the service providers spent a long time putting a very uh, detailed plan in place. There were about 40 collaborators on the plan and um, the business community was able to raise money and so that we could fund a lot of these efforts. Um, so we decided that on November 26th was going to be the day that we enacted this plan. We had a command center in the downtown Fort Lauderdale library, our main library, which is where the encampment was right outside. And within a week, we offered permanent housing to 80 individuals living in the encampment, some families, some couples, and some individuals. And um, Every single person in that encampment has now been assigned a case manager who is working closely with them to get them ID, to get them stabilized. So many people went into motels the first couple of nights and people were thrilled mm -hmm. to have a safe place to mm -hmm. sleep. And uh, we had a van from Broward Health on site for anyone that needed health care. And uh, there was one elderly w woman who was so excited mm. and said not only was she going to have a safe place to sleep that night, but they were going to help her with her glaucoma. Oh. And so that, that's really a big part of it, too, is so many folks, people, organizations coming together. There's so many moving parts, so many pieces of the puzzle, right? Because you talked about these services that also need to be provided for these folks because some of them have health issues right or other problems it is a complex issue yeah. and it's not going to go away so it's really how the community decides to deal with it and as you know this is happening all over the country but we're very excited that our community has come together um, besides the grant from mike jackson now now um andy mitchell of operation lift hope has yeah. also issued a three hundred thousand dollars this grant. costs money so talk about this it really the money costs portion money of all we of had to uh the county had to hire six new case managers mm -hmm. Um, meal sharing is a big part of this. So we have to hire a meal sharing coordinator. We hired somebody through the Broward Business Council to be a landlord recruiter because we needed to reach out to different landlords that, that had maybe been supplying this to governments and say, we need your help to, find, to help us house these people. Mm -hmm. And we have pledged to uh, stay close to them to be there to resolve any issues. Most people just want a safe, pla a safe place to live. 
And, um, but they need ongoing support because either some of them have lived on the street for a very long time and it's difficult to get mainstreamed into anything you're not accustomed to. Sure. Um, many of them work. Many people living in the encampment work every day. Yeah, talk to us about the face of the homeless because some folks may have an idea in their mind of what a homeless person looks like. And you're seeing a lot of these people live in that, lived in that camp and went to work. Went to work every day, wow. which uh, I think does surprise many people, but life happens, mm -hmm. right? And one, one hiccup in mm -hmm. life, whether it's a health issue, whether it's your car breaking down, um, an eviction for a reason, uh, can set somebody back. Yeah. And as we know in Broward County, it's not inexpensive to, to be able to put down first, last, and security on an apartment. Sure, yeah. And so a lot of people just need a hand up and then they are ready to become independent. Yeah. And uh, so the out of the 80 individuals, it's probably about 50, 50, 50 of them will go into what is called rapid rehousing. Uh, and the plan is within six to eight months, they will be completely independent, paying their own rent, living their own lives. The other half may need what we call permanent supportive housing and they may need care for the rest of their lives, um, but it costs significantly less to keep them in an apartment with a case manager than to keep them on the streets. On the streets, they're utilizing our emergency rooms, many hospital stays in and out of jail, sure. calling police and, and uh, EMS on a regular basis, and still utilizing our you know, meal sharing sure. and different, different resources. Once we get them housed, and as we know, basic needs are food and shelter. Once we get them housed, people tend to stay on their meds and they can establish a better life for themselves. So I know the United Way put together a video talking to some of the, the folks who were in that camp. We're gonna show it now. Great. Yeah. I went into a deep depression about my mom. She um, passed away, and, you know, it was, I took it very hard because she was my best friend. I've been out here, like on and off, for three years. Right now, I was just blessed with a job, so I'm working right now, but I'm still out here, so it's still kind of very uncomfortable. I got asthma, and I have a, a chronic back condition, and uh, it keeps me in a lot of pain. I seem to be tough, and I still am, still am here after three years of living in the park. We just need help. Not looking for no handouts or anything, just give us a chance and, you know, won't be out here. Oh, it's heartwarming because you see that these folks, Lynn, like everyone, have has hopes and dreams and aspirations. And like he said, we're not looking for... Uh, a handout. They're looking for a hand up. That's right. Right. And, and when I watch that video, every time I watch it, I am so moved mm. that we are able to give these people a safe place to to be at night. What happened with those folks that we saw? They're in housing now. They are in housing. Okay. And uh, one of our initiatives is also employment. So education and employment. So many of those people want to work, yeah. as you as you see. And uh, so we are working with local employers to um, try to get people reacclimated into the workforce and these people want jobs maybe and some training get some training absolutely. some schooling right talk about because we were we keep saying 80 there were 80 folks in that encampment but there are many more who are homeless in Broward County how what are the numbers there, there are about 2300 before this initiative started mm -hmm. of homeless people that have identified as homeless in Broward County there are many families living in cars, mm -hmm. living in storage units, sneaking wow. their kids in and out at night and washing in a McDonald's or some oh. restroom in the morning. Wow. Um, so th this, is, this is a population that is all over Broward County. Yeah. We are starting, this was our pilot program, so we're starting with Fort Lauderdale. We'll continue in Fort Lauderdale to reach out into some of the parks and we all see people on the streets that, that need us. Yeah. And we'll start with that and then um, one municipality at a time, we'll go to Pompano or Hollywood or you know whatever is next for us and try to do this countywide. The United Way and, and your partners must feel this is such a good first step. There was all this planning. This was the first initiative, and it has seemed to have gone very well. 
We're very excited about the way it went because this is a very complex issue and we're dealing with human beings. And any time on any level when you're dealing with human beings, you don't know always what, what to expect. But we had people that were coming to us that were just so thrilled mm. to be housed. We have apartments that accept people with animals. Mm. So we had someone on site that was vaccinating animals and putting chips, microchipping wow. them, so that um, they can be go into apartments. Yeah. And uh, people are really feeling Happy. like this is their, their second chance. Isn't that wonderful? Thank you, Lynn, so much for being here. My and, pleasure. And, and best of luck to you. We all appreciate all the work that you and United Way and all your partners are doing. And come back and continue to give us updates on how it's going, okay? Oh, we'd love to. Thank you so much. Perfect. And if you have a comment about how Fort Lauderdale is dealing with its homeless population, we'd love to hear from you. Send us your take on this or any topic that matters to you. You can reach us by email or via our Twitter or Facebook page, at your South FL. Leave us a comment or post a video. We always look forward to hearing from you.